Well, as it turns out, there are going to be situations where we draw structures where we have to decide whether or not we want to have the octet rule satisfied or have separations of charges in our formal charges. And so here's a couple of structures that do that. And then I'll tell you what sort of the conclusion is and how we come to that conclusion. Okay. So if you take carbon monoxide and you draw its Lewis structure, you'll start with something that looks like this. And it has a total valence electrons. That's going to be 10. I use two in the bonds. And so my remaining electrons will be eight. And so I'm going to have to distribute eight electrons. So I took a few shortcuts, but um, hopefully you can follow along. One, two, three, four pairs of electrons. I put them on the oxygen first, as we talked about before. Oxygen has the higher ionization energy, and we'll talk about electronegativity. Uh, but it usually gets the electrons first when you draw structure. So when you look at this structure, what you see is oxygen has its octet, but carbon only has four electrons. And so the standard practice is take a pair of electrons and move it in. So I end up with this. Now, let's do the formal charge calculation, because hopefully you recognize here that oxygen normally has two bonds and two lone pairs, and so it actually has that. And if you calculate its formal charge, what you're going to get is six valence minus two bonds minus four lone pair electrons. You'll get zero, like you expect. And then it turns out carbon's got to also be zero, because if it's not zero, there would be a charge on carbon monoxide. Uh, but we'll go ahead and do the calculation. It has four valence electrons, two bonds, and two lone pair electrons. So that gives us a zero there as well. So like I said before, there are situations where you can have a formal charge of zero, even though it doesn't look like you expect it. So if it doesn't look like you expect it to have a zero formal charge, you still have to do the calculation. If it looks like it's going to have a zero formal charge, that is, it has the right number of bonds and lone pairs, then you don't need to do the calculation. All right, so what's wrong with this structure, right? Well, what's wrong with the structure is carbon doesn't have an octet still. And so what we'd have to do is we'd have to bring the carbon in, another pair of electrons from the oxygen, and I get this as my final structure. And you'll see that this has an octet. This one has the octet. But the formal charge for oxygen in this case is 6 minus 3 minus 2 that's plus one. And for the carbon, uh, you could maybe guess that it would be minus one since CO is neutral, but it's going to be four minus three minus two for minus one. So I have a negative and a positive adjacent to each other, but I needed to do that in order to satisfy the octet. Now, when you look at carbon monoxide, uh, either through calculations using quantum mechanics or you look at the data for carbon monoxide, it actually indicates that this is the better structure. So even though we have a buildup of formal charge on the adjacent atoms, um, it turns out it's more important usually to satisfy the octet rule than it is to worry about what the formal charges will be when you um, when you end up making the extra bonds. But the important thing to recognize is that I said when we look at the data, and really ultimately data is the best guide to the way things should be, and there is essentially a triple bond. It's actually stronger uh, than the nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond, which is one of the strongest triple bonds that we have for between two atoms. It's actually stronger than that triple bond, and it actually is has a little bit of a charge separation. They can actually measure these charges. Now, um, the most recent articles for the structure of carbon monoxide, even though we've known about it for hundreds of years, basically, um, uh, the most recent research on carbon monoxide is only from just a few years ago when they were able to better sort of model and, and obtain data for uh, the structure of carbon monoxide. All right, let's look at another one. This is uh, an ion. 
and we need to draw the Lewis structure. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go like this. We're going to do CH3. We're going to put the carbon in the middle. And when you have two carbons, they're usually connected to each other. I'm going to put the hydrogens on that first carbon. So what essentially this sort of notation means is this, this is a carbon with three hydrogens. It should make four bonds, and that last bond goes to this carbon here. And then I have a single oxygen on here like this and a positive charge. So that's my skeleton. So now what I have to do is do the valence electron. So I have two carbons, so it's two times, two times four, plus I have three hydrogens, so it's going to be three times one. Again, that's the number and then the valence electrons. So this is for my hydrogen. My oxygen is six, So it's 1 times 6, that's for oxygen, and a positive charge means I have to subtract an electron. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add all this up, so that's 8 plus 3, right, so that'll be 11, plus 6 would give me 17, and then I'm going to subtract 1 electron for the charge because it's positive. So it leaves me a total of 16 electrons. Now, I need to count up the electrons that are in the skeleton. So there's one, two, three, four, five bonds. So my skeletal electrons, there's 10. There's only six electrons that are left. So what I'll end up with is my remaining electrons. It's going to be uh, 16 minus 10, so I have six electrons, so three pairs. And so what I do is I go ahead and put them all on the oxygen like that. Now, right, carbon satisfied octet, this carbon not, and the oxygen's happy. Now this carbon doesn't have any electrons to give, but this oxygen has electrons to give. And so what it's going to do, very similar to the structure in carbon monoxide, so this is C, C. I'm going to donate two pairs of electrons to that carbon to give me this structure. Now the question is, what are the formal charges here, right? turns out, if you do the formal charge calculations, right, you notice carbon has a triple bond and a single bond, so he's happy. This carbon has all four bonds that it needs. The hydrogens each have one. So in other words, these are all zero over here because they look exactly like we expected as we went over in the one slide earlier. So what that means is this oxygen has to carry the charge. So if we do the formal charge calculation for it, and I'm not going to do it, I'm just going to draw the formal charge. It's positive like this. Now one of the things we talked about is that oxygen being m more electronegative uh, or ha being the harder to ionize doesn't generally like to have a positive charge. Uh, so you have to decide whether or not you have to have this formal charge or you have to take back a pair of electrons and have an unsatisfied octet on the carbon. In other words, you have to decide whether or not this structure is okay. Sorry. Or this structure is okay. Now, you could either have the electrons, right, on the carbon and the positive charge on the oxygen, or sorry, the electrons um, on the oxygen or, and the positive charge on the carbon, or the electrons donated and the positive charge on the oxygen. It turns out the better structure is this one, but these two structures are actually in resonance with each other. If you recognize, it's the same arrangement of atoms, just a different arrangement of the electrons. And so these two are resonant structures of the, each other, but the better structure is this one because it satisfies the octet rule. And again, that's based on data.
And so ultimately, these kinds of decisions get based on data, but usually we look at the octet rule as superseding anything having to do with formal charge. So here's the last one, and uh, I've included the experimental evidence for you, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to draw SO2 um, and then use the structure that has charges in it and not a structure that doesn't have charge. And then we'll have a discussion about what that actually means uh, for the structure. So this is what you should have come up with, two possible structures, right? And the valence electrons were 18, the skeletal electrons, they were four, and then the remaining electrons were 14, so that meant seven pairs, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, there's when you're doing these kinds of things, you should check to make sure that um, the total electrons is still 18, and it is in the structure. Well, what you find is the sulfur doesn't have an octet. So to satisfy the octet, one of the oxygens need to, needs to donate a pair of electrons to the sulfur, and you end up with this structure. Now, here's the deal, right? We have adjacent charges on adjacent atoms, and you need to draw a Lewis structure from this just based on the rules we had in class. And the rules we have in class say that if you have an element from a period beyond the second period, so sulfur is in the third period, that you can expand the octet and cancel the formal charge. So you end up with this structure, okay? But the latest experimental evidence, and this evidence really isn't that old, is that the, there is a charge on the oxygen and the sulfur in the Lewis structure, or in the actual structure. So what that actually means is, well, this is, this is the structure you would draw based on the rules given in class. Experimental evidence says that that's the actual structure, okay? I just realized that looks like some sort of weird face over here on the right-hand side. This guy here. Anyways, um, but these charges are zero, so really what you have to do, unless you're given evidence, is you need to follow the rules and go along to get this as your final structure. If you're given evidence that says their atoms are charged in the structure, then the evidence would suggest then that this is the actual structure. So rather than putting electrons into the 3D orbitals to expand the octet like it does here, it would rather leave this as an ionic bond, essentially, one between a positive and a negative adjacent to each other.